Hey, welcome to a new video. Millions of years ago, in an era long before the emergence of humanity, terrifying sea creatures inhabited the waters of our planet. Some of these marine animals were not only fascinating, but also extraordinarily dangerous. They possessed unique features and traits that made them formidable predators in the ocean. Today we're going to show you the 20 most dangerous extinct sea monsters. Are you new to this channel? Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And before we start, also like the video. Number 20. Zephactinus was a dangerous sea monster that could change color like a chameleon. In addition, it could swallow prey half its size and surpass nearly everything in the ocean in terms of speed. This nightmarish creature was once a gigantic predatory fish that lived during the late Cretaceous, about 100 to 66 million years ago. It belonged to an extinct group of bony fish. These predatory fish inhabited the oceans, rivers, and freshwater lakes of North America. Zephactinus was a formidable hunter and had large, sharp, interlocking teeth, and its jaw could open extremely wide. Its bite was as terrifying as its appearance. Fossil evidence suggests that this creature had well-developed pectoral fins that allowed it to swim at high speeds and maneuver efficiently in the water. The fact that it could possibly change color helped it blend into its environment, allowing it to easily avoid predators. There were also Zavactinus fossils found with the remains of their own species in their stomachs, suggesting that they were cannibalistic. Number 19. Ontopristus, also known as the giant saw, is an extinct species of giant sawfish that lived during the Upper Cretaceous. Although the sea monster looks like a shark, it's actually more closely related to rays. One of the most striking features is its saw-like snout, equipped with deadly barbs. Ontopristus was a large marine creature, some specimens reaching a length of up to almost 30 feet, or 9 meters. It lived in shallow seas where it likely hunted small fish and invertebrates. The name Ontopristus comes from the Greek words onkos, meaning hook or barb, and pristis meaning saw. It's sometimes also referred to as the chainsaw fish. The barbs on its snout was probably used as a defense mechanism against predators. The teeth of the sea monster were arranged in a flattened, grinding surface. It's believed to have become extinct about 65 million years ago. Fossils of Ontopristus have been found in Africa, Europe, and North America, indicating that it was once a widespread species that lived in different habitats. Number 18. Ichthyosaurus was a terrifying group of marine reptiles that lived for at least 160 million years. Some Ichthyosaurus were the largest marine reptiles that ever lived, with Shastasaurus being the largest, measuring up to 69 feet or 21 meters in length. These sea creatures lived in oceans all over the world during the Mesozoic era. They had a body structure similar to that of modern dolphins. They were fast swimmers with long, powerful tails that allowed them to propel themselves through the water. These fascinating sea creatures had a range of physical features that enabled them to thrive in the marine environment. Their bodies were covered with a range of small scales that reduced resistance when swimming, and they had large, powerful eyes that allowed them to see well in low light. Fossils of Ichthyosaurus have been found on every continent, including Antarctica. Number 17. Paleophis is an extinct genus of sea snakes that lived during the Eocene era. These were the largest snakes of their time. Paleophis was a formidable predator that feasted on a variety of ocean prey, including fish, turtles, and surprisingly, even whales. Despite their size, Paleophis was an incredible sea creature, capable of swimming at incredible speeds. Their elongated slender bodies and flattened tails allowed them to glide effortlessly through the water, making them exceptionally skilled at hunting their prey. The largest species of Paleophis are thought to have been more than 39 feet, or 12 meters long, similar in size to the modern anaconda. These enormous snakes had impressive jaws filled with sharp teeth, which allowed them to easily grab and devour their prey. A specialized joint at the base of the skull also allowed them to open their jaws exceptionally wide. Despite their impressive hunting skills, Paleophis disappeared from the fossil record during the Oligocene era, about 23 million years ago. The exact reason for their extinction remains unknown. What do you think led to their downfall? Let me know in those comments. Number 16. Rhizotus is one of the oldest and largest fish ever discovered, and has earned the impressive title of a true giant. 
With an estimated length of up to 20 feet, or 6 meters, and a weight of more than a ton, it was a top predator of its time, and possessed several features that made it a formidable hunter. It had a mouthful of sharp teeth and a streamlined body, which made it very adept to catching and devouring its prey. Its diet likely consisted of various aquatic animals, including fish, amphibians, and possibly small reptiles. The dangerous aspect of Rhizotis lie in its ability to dominate the aquatic ecosystem. Rhizotis ruled all water and is also considered the most monstrous river monster of all time. Unfortunately, not too much info is known about the fish. However, we do know that it lived 377 to 310 million years ago. During the Devonian and Carboniferous eras, it's thought that it went extinct as a result of competition from early ray-finned fish, and sharks were better adapted to the changing marine environments of that time. Number 15. Dunkleosteus is an extinct genus of large fish that existed during the late Devonian, approximately 382 to 358 million years ago. It belongs to the Arthrodires, a group of ancient fish that were among the most dominant predators of their time. The jaws of the Dunkleostis were incredibly powerful and were known as one of the strongest biters of all time. Like many of its relatives, Dunkleostis had an armor-like skin that protected it from most marine predators. Despite its size and impressive hunting skills, it had an unusual feeding behavior. Dunkleostis had a large, powerful jaw with sharp bone-like plates instead of real teeth to clamp down on its prey. It's likely that it primarily fed on other large fish and marine animals, such as sharks or squids. A terrifying fact is that Dunkleostis could grow nearly 33 feet, or 10 meters long, making it one of the largest fish that's ever lived. Number 14. Decasaurus is an extinct genus of crocodilomorphs that lived during the late Jurassic and early Cretaceous, about 154 to 100 million years ago. The name Dacosaurus comes from the Greek word tadakos, which means tear, and soros, which means lizard, referring to its serrated teeth. Dacosaurus had serrated teeth that were laterally compressed, allowing it to easily tear through the flesh of its prey. This marine reptile was considered a top predator and fed on a variety of prey, including fish, squids, and other reptiles. And here comes the alarming part. It had a cranial kinesis, which means that its upper jaw could move independently during feeding and hunting. This ability would have allowed it to open its jaw wider and bite more powerfully. The fossils of the Dacosaurus would have been found in Europe, South America, and even in parts of Asia. They're also sometimes found together with the remains of other prehistoric marine reptiles, suggesting that they may have lived in groups or hunted cooperatively. Number 13. Telemonstrum, also known as Tully's monster, is an extinct genus of invertebrates that lived approximately 300 million years ago. It was a strange looking animal, with a body about 12 inches or 30 centimeters long, and a long trunk like structure that ended in a pair of claws or hooks. Its body was segmented, and it had two fins along its back, in which it used for swimming. It's still not entirely clear what kind of animal it was exactly, as its anatomy is unique and doesn't strongly resemble any modern animal. However, scientists have classified it as a member of Bilateria, a group of animals that include everything from worms to humans. Despite its unusual appearance, Telemonstrum was probably an important part of the marine ecosystem during its time. Its fossils were mainly found in North America, particularly in Illinois. The fossils were in sediments, suggesting it lived in shallow marine waters. It's also thought to have been a carnivorous animal, and some scientists say it might have been possibly toxic. Number 12. The widespread Nothosaurus was an extinct genus of reptiles from the Triassic era, living from about 240 to 210 million years ago. The name Nothosaurus translates to false lizard and was given to this creature because its physical characteristics were initially confused with those of a lizard. These animals were marine reptiles that had evolved from land animals and were well adapted to hunting fish underwater. They had elongated bodies that could reach a length of up to 13 feet, or 4 meters, and streamlined heads that helped them move swiftly through the water. They also had paddle-like limbs that allowed them to swim easily through the water, and a long, powerful tail that aided them in maneuvering and changing direction. They were also able to regulate their body temperature, making them warm-blooded. This is a unique characteristic that the Nathosaurus shared with modern mammals and some birds, and was a reason why they were successful in the seas. They had a powerful bite and teeth that were adapted to catch and hold slippery fish. These serrated teeth helped them to easily cut through the flesh of their prey. 
Number 11. The Liopleurodon wasn't a dinosaur, but it lived alongside them, which perhaps speaks even more to its power. This sea monster was one of the largest known marine reptiles that had ever lived, with an estimated maximum length of up to 23 feet or 7 meters, and a weight of up to 4,410 pounds or 2,000 kilograms. It had a huge head with sharp teeth and four fins, which had efficiently hunted large prey. The first remnants of the Liopleurodon were discovered in England in the 19th century. But it wasn't until more complete remains were found in France in the 80s and 90s that paleontologists began to appreciate the true size and characteristics of the sea monster. The Liopleurodon was a plesiosaur, meaning it had a long neck and a relatively small head in relation to its body. Nevertheless, its head was still enormous, with jaws that could open wide enough to swallow the prey the size of small cars. This sea monster was only present for 5 million years, but it would have caused quite a stir. The creature hunted with a unique technique called hydrodynamic camouflage. It used its large body to create a wave, allowing it to hide and be more difficult to spot by its prey. Once the Liopleurodon was close enough, it quickly accelerated and grabbed its prey with lightning-fast reflexes. Number 10. The Mosasaurus is an extinct genus of aquatic reptiles, known as Mosasaurus, which lived during the late Cretaceous, about 82 to 66 million years ago. It's considered one of the largest and most powerful predators of the oceans at that time. According to scientists, it was probably the top predator in its ecosystem and fed on various sea creatures such as fish, marine reptiles, and invertebrates. The Mosasaurus is usually depicted in deep oceans, although it's known that they could swim close to the water surface as well. Fossils of the Mosasaurus have been found in various places around the world, particularly in marine deposits. Some known sites include the Dutch city of Maastricht, the Western Interior Seaway in North America, and the Hatek Formation in Romania. They were found close to the coast, indicating the genus frequented both shallow and deep waters. The discovery of the Mosasaurus also changed the way paleontologists view the evolution of vertebrate animals. Mosasaurus and other mosasaurs were water-dwelling reptiles and were part of a larger group of reptiles. The discovery of these sea creatures caused a reconsideration of the idea that all reptiles only lived on land. It had led to renewed research into the connections between different reptile groups and their habitats. Number 9. The scientific name of this next sea monster is Dracopristes Hoffmanorum, but the media or the public named it the Godzilla shark as a way to describe its terrifying and intimidating appearance. The Godzilla shark was first discovered in 2013 in New Mexico by a team of researchers from the Field Museum in Chicago. The remains consisted of the shark's jaws, teeth, and several other bones. Based on the size and structure of the remains, the researchers were able to determine that the Godzilla shark belonged to an extinct group of sharks, known as hypodontophores. They were a diverse group of sharks that existed from the early Paleozoic to the end of the Mesozoic era, about 365 to 66 million years ago. They were characterized by their two dorsal fins, large eyes, and sharp teeth. They were also proficient at swimming in both freshwater and saltwater environments. The shark was named after the fictional monster Godzilla due to its large size and powerful jaws. The sea monster would have been approximately 6.5 feet or 2 meters long and would have lived in freshwater environments during the early Permian, about 300 million years ago. Number 8. The Tylosaurus is an ancestor of modern monitor lizards and snakes, and at a length of 46 feet or 14 meters, it was a terrifying sea monster to encounter. This massive, ferocious sea reptile inhabited the oceans during the end of the Cretaceous period, about 85 to 80 million years ago. The Tylosaurus was one of the largest sea monsters to exist, and had a long body with four fins and a powerful tail that propelled it through the water. The Tylosaurus was a formidable hunter and fed on various marine animals, including fish, ammonites, and even other marine reptiles. A unique feature that distinguished it from other mosasaurs was its enormous, club-shaped snout. This snout was used as a powerful weapon to enable it to attack and overpower its prey. It would also frequently have battled with other males of its species. Scientists have debated over the exact function of the unusual shape of the Tylosaurus' head, characterized by a short snout and sturdy forehead, and gigantic jaws with sharp teeth. Some researchers believe that this head shape was specialized to bite through the shells of marine reptiles like turtles and ammonites, while others think it was used to ram prey like a battering ram. Number 7. The Helicoprion is an extinct genus of shark-like creatures that lived during the early Triassic era, 
about 290 to 250 million years ago. Almost all specimens of Helicoprion have clusters of individual teeth arranged in a spiral pattern attached to the lower jaw. These clusters are known as tooth whorls, and they are one of the most distinctive and recognizable features of the Helicoprion. The exact shape and arrangement of Helicoprion's tooth whorls have been a subject of much debate among scientists. Some early reconstructions suggested that teeth formed a saw-like blade, while others proposed a more spiral-like shape. This reptile would have only reached lengths of 10 to 16.5 feet, or 3 to 5 meters. It likely fed on small fish and other marine invertebrates, using its unique tooth whorls to catch and crush its prey. Number 6. The Chronosaurus is an extinct genus of short-necked Pleosaurus, a kind of marine reptile that lived during the early Cretaceous era, about 120 million years ago. Their fossil remains, limited in number, have sparked our imagination, although the reality is just as fascinating. The Chronosaurus was a top predator in the ecosystem in which it lived, feeding on a variety of prey, including fish, ammonites, and other marine reptiles. It had a large head and powerful jaws, lined with hundreds of sharp teeth, making it one of the most formidable predators of its time. Like other pleosaurs, the Chronosaurus had four large fins that allowed it to swim through the water. These fins were capable of generating a significant amount of propulsion. One of the most unique features of the Chronosaurus was its extremely short neck. Unlike other pleosaurs who had longer necks that allowed them to more effectively grab prey, Chronosaurus had a neck that consisted only of a few short vertebrae. Fossil specimens of the sea monster have been primarily found in Australia, particularly in the Queensland and Northern Territory regions. Number 5. We can somewhat accept giant sharks, king whales, and biting reptiles, but the line really has to be drawn at ancient alien scorpions, right? The Eurypterids, better known as sea scorpions, were a group of anthropods that lived in the oceans between 470 million and 251 million years ago. They were the largest anthropods that had ever existed, and the largest species was more than 6.5 feet or 2 meters long. The largest prehistoric sea scorpion belongs to the species Ecolopterus, which lived about 390 million years ago. It was a terrifying sea monster with long spiky legs and powerful claws with which it could easily crush its prey. The Eurypterids fed on a range of prey, including fish, snails, and other invertebrates. The larger species might even have been able to overpower small vertebrates like early fish, making them formidable predators in the ocean. Today, the largest living scorpion is the Emperor Scorpion, which can grow to be more than 8 inches or 20 centimeters long and weighs about 1.5 ounces or 40 grams. Compared to the prehistoric sea scorpions, however, it's small and weighs less than one thousandth of the weight of the largest Eurypterids. Number 4. The Leviathan was aptly named after the biblical sea monster Leviathan, and worryingly, it lived about 10 to 12 million years ago, during the Miocene epoch. The Leviathan was a giant sperm whale, estimated to have been about 44 feet or 13.5 meters long, and weighed up to 50 tons. One of the most striking features of this creature was its enormous jaws and teeth. Its mouth was approximately 6 feet or 1.8 meters long and 4 feet or 1.2 meters wide, which is three times larger than an orca's mouth. Its teeth were also enormous, with lengths up to 14 inches or 36 centimeters and weighing up to 2.2 pounds or 1 kilogram. Before the discovery of Leviathan, it was thought that all the members of the sperm whale family were adapted to hunt squids. However, Leviathan's massive jaws and teeth suggested that it possibly had a more varied and violent diet. Interestingly, one of the most fascinating things about Leviathan is that it would have coexisted with several other enormous sea predators, including megalodons, giant crocodiles, and other large whales. It's thought that these sea monsters probably shared the same food sources, and may have even been involved in violent territorial conflicts. Number 3. The name Basilosaurus means King Lizard, and was given to the creature due to its elongated snake-like body. The name is somewhat misleading, as it wasn't a real lizard. The confusing name was originally given because of the similar shape to the vertebrate of those of lizards. Upon further study, however, it became clear that the Basilosaurus was a type of whale, not a lizard. They were large, predatory, prehistoric whales that lived during the Eocene, about 41.3 to 33.9 million years ago. It's one of the oldest known types of whales, or marine mammals. The first prehistoric whale known to humans Despite the name, the Basilosaurus was not a lizard. It was a mammal, and it's believed to have evolved from terrestrial ancestors that gradually adapted to the life in the sea. 
Although the Basilosaurus was a whale, it still retained some features more similar to land animals. For example, it had small hind legs that were not used for locomotion. In addition, it also had a long narrow snout with sharp teeth that were all suited for catching and eating prey. The Basilosaurus could grow up to 66 feet or 20 meters long and weigh up to 10 tons. Fossilized stomach contents suggest that it occasionally ate larger creatures as well, such as sharks and other whales. Number 2. Meet Predator X, also known as the Pleosaurus. This sea monster was a type of plesiosaur that lived during the late Jurassic epoch in Europe. It earned the nickname Predator X because of its terrifying characteristics and immense size. Pleosaurus fungi was the largest discovered pleosaurid, with a length of approximately 40 feet, or 12 meters, and weighing about 45 tons. Its massive 6.5 foot, or 2 meter skull was equipped with enormous jaws that could generate a bite force of about 33,000 pounds, or 15,000 kilograms. Despite its incredible size, this sea monster was an agile and fast swimmer, potentially capable of swimming at speeds of up to 35 kilometers an hour. This made it a formidable predator that could quickly approach its prey and deliver a devastating bite. Pleosaurs fed on a range of prey, including fish, sharks, other marine reptiles like ichthyosaurs, and even dinosaurs. Some scientists believe it also fed on other plesiosaurs, making it one of the top predators of the seas in the late Jurassic epoch. Number 1. The Megalodon was one of the largest and most powerful predators to have ever existed on Earth. It lived about 23 to 3 million years ago, during the Cenozoic era. It's estimated that it could grow up to 59 feet, or 18 meters long, and weigh up to 100 tons. Its massive teeth alone could reach lengths of up to 7 inches, or 18 centimeters, making them larger than any other known shark species. This shark lived in the oceans all over the world, and it was known as a top predator that would eat almost anything it could catch, including whales, dolphins, giant turtles, and even other sharks. It was an absolute beast in a tank, possibly capable of swimming at speeds up to 37 miles per hour, or 60 kilometers per hour. It also had a remarkable sense of smell that helped it detect prey at great distances. Most scientists agree that the megalodon is extinct, but they are still trying to understand why it disappeared from the planet 3 million years ago. Some, however, believe that the megalodon still swims around, as only a small percentage of the ocean has been explored. Which sea monster would you like to see brought back to life? Let me know in the comments. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos we've made, click one on the screen or take a look at the channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.